So today on the bench, I wanted to take a quick look at the little 5R limiter, the little NTC limiter that I have. In my previous video, I was talking about my Ego chainsaw and how well it had done. And I briefly talked about the Nexus Escape 150 watt inverter and how it wouldn't actually run my chainsaw sharpening Dremel. So I had this small Dremel and I just simply tried to hook it up and tried it with my Nexus Escape. Even though this is a 1.15 rated rotary tool, it's just too much inrush current for it and it faults it out. So I just simply mentioned that video. Not to take a whole lot of time on that video, I mentioned that I had a 5R limiter, which was set up a little bit differently. Um, I'll talk about that in just a second, but I simply plug it into this box and show that we could run it just fine. So I just, I mentioned in that video if anybody had any comments and wanted to go take a, a little bit further look at this, I'd be, I'd be glad to do so. It was interesting to anybody. And I actually had several on YouTube, but I posted in a, a Ego Facebook group and they actually had more comments so far than, than the YouTube video. It's a link to my YouTube video, but they posted more about it in there than in the video comments, honestly. So I did want to share this. So I did just have a two wire cord hooked to this and I just, I put on here ungrounded. So I knew to only use it for a two wire, but to show for demonstration purposes, I thought surely I would, I would definitely just hook a ground wire to it. So this is 18 gauge, just regular drop cord, SO cord. And what we have here, just a little small single receptacle. And people are asking about what type of NTC. So we'll show you. This is what I had, so it's, I used to use this for no more than 10 amp max anyway. So the 18 gauge is, is plenty enough current for what I use it for. I first of all used these some time ago on a, a thousand watt inverter to like take the, uh, the startup torque of like a drill or grinder or something like that. Sometimes it'll quench that startup uh, inrush current enough to get you by to run it right. So this is what we have here. I got where I can have two or one. In this case, I just have it hooked up. Of course, our neutral and our ground is just going straight out. And what we have here is an NTC, and this is the exact same NTC. So I'll show you a close up of it. And we're just going in series with our NTC through our hot connection. Of course, the small blade is our hot connection there. And I just simply leave this in here now because if I need it for some reason, to have a little bit more inrush knocked down or a little bit more help with that inrush or the load. I can put two of these in series. And if you can see that this is a 5R012. So this is a five ohm and it's a 12 amp rated. So honestly, the closest to the amp rating, the better for you as far as the way the curve or the chart shows on an NTC. I'll try to put the, uh, data sheet up here for it. So you can see a little bit of information on this particular NTC. I'm gonna bring over another meter. We'll go to ohms. And here at room temperature, we're spot on, we're at five ohms. And that's what I expected. Um, there's no current flowing, so it's not heating up and the NTC thermistor, of course, stands for negative temperature coefficient. So that just means it's inversely proportional to the heat rise, right? So, so the more current that we flow through here, the more heat we're going to have. And as the heat rises, our resistance will decrease negative. You may have also heard of PTCs or positive temperature coefficients, and those are used more like for fuses, right? So if you wanted some type of automatically resettable fuse, a PTC is the way to do it. Therefore, as the heat rises, you'll see a, a trend or you will have a slope on a rise where the temperature rise as current quickly, quickly elevates to become almost completely open. So it will actually quench like even a short circuit condition. It, it'll just quickly open up. But with the NTC, the more current we flow across that five ohms, like for inrush, 
the more this is going to heat up and it drops off. So it gives us a soft start just built in, right? So that inrush current, it just knocks the edge off of it. So will it work with every load? No, it will not. Will it help with any resistive load? No, it will not. This is actually a 150 watt bulb that I have. It's a halogen floodlight. It actually pulls over 150 watts. And this Nexus will not run it. I tried just for load testing it and things of that nature and it would not run it. I could run a 60, 60 watt, 75 watt, all that fine. I didn't actually have a hundred watt, but I had this 150 and I thought, man, it would be neat. If I, when I was load testing these, I thought it'd be neat if I could put it right on the edge, but this 150 watt pulls about 165 watts and it will not start it. And with that being said, if an inductive load pulls too much in inrush, this can knock the edge off of it. A resistive load, like a light bulb or a heater, if it's too much, it's just going to be too much. Knocking the inrush down is not going to help. And even if it did let you start it up as soon as it would heat up and the resistance drops, it would then become too much. So, so not a miracle worker, as I mentioned in my previous video. It, it won't take care of something that's just totally too much for it. But in this case, we had a really good application for this. Um, just like a drill or a grinder on my 1,000-watt inverter I had on my truck years ago. If I do bring over my heat gun, I'll just show you real briefly um, the resistance dropping here. And it's kind of how it does when the current comes in on it. And we see real, well, real quickly we drop to zero ohms. So that's how this thing works. And once it heats up and becomes an operation, it'll drop down and it won't be much loss across it. I kind of had this set up to be an inrush limiter where I have five ohms. And as I mentioned, I could put this one in series as well and make it 10 ohms if you need just a little bit more inrush help. I also had the 18 gauge wire. And since I'm gonna limit this to like 10 amps, right? Oh, I used to have a thousand watt inverter, so I didn't need more than 10 amps capability on this. So naturally with a, a 15 or 20 amp rated plug, typically, right, you want a 12 gauge um, cord. But in this case, the 18 gauge actually helped us out because it has 6.3 ohms per thousand feet on 18 gauge so we're talking about twice as much voltage drop on an 18 gauge as we would a 12 gauge uh, wire so even that's going to have a little bit of resistance and voltage drop across it and actually may help with a load that we're already having trouble starting as well of course it's best to never run these in parallel it wouldn't give you twice the current like you may think because one of them is going to take more current than the other is is in any parallel um, circuit like that you're going to flow Whichever one has the least resistance is going to have more flow and more drop across it. So the resistance is going to change quicker on it. So it's just not a good idea. I just wanted to show here a minute with some ice here. We'll see if we can cool this down a little bit quicker here. And we'll see that we'll get some help going back to 5 ohms of greater right. The ice definitely took it up above 5 ohms. There we go. We just want to get it back to room temperature, which is usually going to be around five ohms, somewhere around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But I just wanted to mention the cooling effect. You would actually need to have either a metal case with a good heat sink on it and try to have it touching or have you some good ventilation. If you had a, a load you wanted to start and stop a good bit, because what we see here, if we don't cool it down and it stays warm, the resistance will stay low. Therefore, if you're starting and stopping a load, you may get to the point where the ohms will be so low, it'll be so warm that it wouldn't start up on you. But for what I use it for, I hadn't had to do that. But just keep that in mind. Hey guys, back here with one last test set up before we go. I just simply have my meter reading our AC voltage and it's actually reading across our five ohm NTC resistor. So once we put our power through it, we'll see the voltage drop and that voltage drop should slowly come down as it starts to run. So here we go. We'll do that one more time. We just seen there the longer it ran and the more heat we had built up we just saw the lower that that voltage drop across was and we started off above four or five volts and started dropping down rapidly you may want to add an inline fuse like i probably should put a 10 amp fuse or ptc in here 
but usually when I'm doing this, I'm always standing here and I'm always making sure I'm not overloading it, but it never hurts to have that protection. So I hope you enjoyed this video today, looking at this small NTC inrush limiter that helped us get our, our small load started up here. And don't forget to comment down below. Check out some of the um, links to some tools that I really like to use here on my workbench that might help you out if you're interested. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.